and listeners, welcome to NIS Studio. We'll be discussing about the next topic, which is psychotherapy, and this is lesson number 24 in your self-learning material. Before we begin with the topic, we must know that what is the term psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is actually a process where a trained psychologist is helping a disturbed person to behave normally. After the end of this program, you would be able to explain that what is the purpose of psychotherapy and also we'll be describing about the major models of psychotherapy that would help you to know that what are the different kind of psychotherapies that are used by the psychologist to treat the behavioral problems of the people. Let's begin with the today's topic. First of all, we'll discuss about the medical model. As I've already said that we would be discussing about the different models or different psychotherapies that are used to create the behavioral problems. So, the first in this comes the medical model. What is medical model? As the medical model suggests, the medical model views abnormality as a kind of illness and the illness is occurring due to a physical cause. And because it is occurring because of a physical cause, it can also be treated with the help of medicines. So, as per medical model, abnormality is actually a kind of illness which can be treated with the help of medicine. Medical model actually considers the role of genetics and the imbalances in neurotransmitter responsible for any kind of abnormality that happens in an individual's normal functioning. There are various therapeutic approaches that are used in the medical model. And these approaches are usually referred to as a somatic therapy in the medical model. There are three different kinds of somatic therapies which are currently in use and they are the chemotherapy, the electroconvulsive therapy and the psychosurgery. Let us know about these uh, three therapies. First of all, ECT. You might have heard about ECT that is electroconvulsive therapy. It involves administering electric current for short duration through electrodes to the head of the person who is suffering from a psychological disorder. Actually, the ECT is used to treat the depression, bipolar disorder which includes mania depression and also is used to treat the obsessive compulsive disorder also known as OCD. The next in this comes the psychosurgery. Psychosurgery is actually performing a surgery on the brain in order to alter the psychological functioning. It is used only as a last resort in extreme psychological disturbance like in aggressive schizophrenics. The most common and effective somatic therapy that a medical model uses is a chemotherapy. What is chemotherapy? It actually involves giving medicines to the person with the, with the disorders. There are three main types of medicines that are used. First is the neuroleptics or we call them the major tranquilizers or antipsychotic drugs and these are mainly used to treat the schizophrenics and the manics. Then comes in line are the antidepressants and these are used to treat several disorders that include depression. Last we have the enzyloic uh, drugs and these are also known as the minor tranquilizers. These are basically used to treat the anxiety disorder. So this was all about the medical model. Now comes the next psychotherapy which is psychodynamic therapy. Psychodynamic therapy. We have always been discussing about psychodynamic therapy or psychoanalysis. As we already know that the propounder of psychoanalysis was Sigmund Freud. As per Sigmund Freud or the psychodynamic model, the disorders are caused by the internal psychological factors which are basically unresolved and unconscious childhood conflicts. The therapy in this model is actually referred to as psychoanalysis. What is psychoanalysis? Psychoanalysis helps to understand the unconscious conflicts that are responsible for a person's mental disorders and then to make the person consciously aware of it. How it is done? It allows the person to deal more effectively with his or her problems. The approach which is most widely used in psychoanalysis is a technique which is called free association. The basic procedure is that the patient says whatever comes to their mind 
Since this bypasses the ego's role of censoring or blocking the threatening unconscious impulses. The ultimate goal of psychoanalysis is major modification of personality that enables person to deal with problems in a realistic way. And when the people do it, they do it without using defense mechanism. Sometimes hypnosis or dream interpretations are also used to help the therapeutic process. Here's a picture which depicts that how the client is uh, positioned while doing a free association therapy. The client is lying on the couch and whatever comes to the client's mind, he speaks it out and the psychotherapist makes note out of it and then tries to analyze the unconscious uh, conflicts that are making a problem for the client. The next therapy which we have or the next psychotherapy which we have is based on the behavioral model. What is behavioral model? The behavioral model views that the disorders are actually the learned maladaptive behaviors. Watson was the first person to suggest that mental disorders, for example, phobias, which are also called as the extreme fear of certain objects or people or situation, anything that may be related to the animals or the situation, these uh, situations can be explained in terms of mechanisms of conditioning. That is, we are conditioned to respond in a set manner to particular objects in the environment that are around us and that may create anxiety for the person. So these are actually the maladaptive behavior that we have learned from the surroundings. The behavior therapies use classical conditioning procedures or principles whereas the behavioral modification techniques are based on the operant conditioning. What happens in behavior therapy? In behavior therapy, the assumption is that if maladaptive behavior can be acquired through classical conditioning, then the same maladaptive behaviors can be unlearned by the same principles of conditioning. There are three approaches that are based on behavior therapy. These are the implosion therapy, flooding and systematic desensitization. In implosion therapy, the therapist again and again exposes the person to mental images of the feared stimulus in the safety of his room. The person is asked to imagine the most frightening form of contact with the feared object. After a number of trials, the stimulus which is creating anxiety for the person person per se it is snakes loses its power to cause anxiety. Remember that in implosion therapy the therapist is asking the client to imagine the situation and the therapist is not actually exposing the client to the feared stimulus. It is just imagining the feared stimulus. Next is flooding. What is happening in flooding? The individual is actually forced to face the situation that causes the fear or anxiety. For example, a person who has fear of height may be forced to stay on the roof for a longer time. With some persons, this approach is effective and removes the fear of the situation. Implosion therapy and flooding have limited effectiveness. A better uh, procedure over these two therapies is called systematic desensitization. In systematic desensitization, what is happening that the person is asked to construct a hierarchy of the events which gradually lead to the person to face the object or situation which causes it. For example, a person who has a fear of dead bodies may be asked to imagine an ambulance and then focus on the relaxation techniques. Then the person may be asked to go close to a cremation ground and finally through a number of intermediate steps the person may be asked to come close to a dead body and at the same time focus on relaxation. That is first of all in systematic desensitization an individual is actually asked to construct a hierarchy of events that are creating problems for the individual. Next the individual is asked to focus on the relaxation techniques and in the final steps whatever the individual has learned he or she needs to apply it. For example, if a person has a fear of snakes, what will be created in the hierarchy of events? First is to look at the picture of 
the snake that is that, that comes at the first level in the hierarchy and then focus on the relaxation techniques then once you uh, overcome this fear of looking the snake in the picture then you actually go to a place where there is a snake and then look at the snake with your uh, naked eyes this is done till the time the fear loses its intensity to create anxiety in the person this is known as systematic desensitization apart from the approaches that are based on classical conditioning there are certain other therapies that are based on operant conditioning what is operant conditioning we have been discussing time and again it is based on the principle of reinforcements in the behavioral modification techniques there are number of therapies as i have already said that these are based on the operant conditioning and all of them consist of three basic steps what are those three basic steps the first step is actually to identify the undesirable behavior the next step involves the identification of reinforcers that are maintaining that uh, maladaptive behavior and the last involves the restructuring of the environment in such a way that the maladaptive behavior is no longer reinforced so uh, if i give you a general example from daily life uh, the three steps that may be involved in behavior modification uh, therapy can be understood uh, by taking an example of a child uh, who throws tantrums all every other time for example if the child goes to the market with uh, uh, the parent the child always demands for one or the other thing so that is the identification of the undesirable behavior because every time the parent cannot uh, satisfy the demand of the child so the first step in uh, which is involved in behavior modification is identifying the undesirable behavior in order to fulfill his or her demand the child may lie down on the road all the time when his or her desires are not fulfilled so this is the uh, first step which is identifying the undesirable behavior which is lying down the setting second uh, comes the identification of the reinforcer the first as i said is identifying the undesirable behavior so undesirable behavior here is throwing a tantrum all the time and if the need is not satisfied then lying down on the uh, road the second involves the reinforcers that are maintaining the maladaptive behavior now what is the reinforcer here that is whenever the child lies down then the parent uh, you know gives in to the demands of the child and satisfies his uh, demand that is the child knows that if i lie down on the floor then my demands will be uh, fulfilled so this is identifying the reinforcer and the third is restructuring the environment in such a way that the maladaptive behavior is no longer reinforced so in the third step even if initially the child is lying down then the parent will not respond to the child that is called as restructuring the environment if this is done repeatedly for a number of times in this manner then the child will stop throwing tantrums because he or she will understand that this is not bothering or this is not gaining attention this is not helping me to gain attention from my parents you can explain in uh, you can understand it in one other way that is uh, one way to eliminate behaviors which are not desirable is to remove the stimuli that maintain them you may remove any stimuli which is around you that is maintaining the undesirable behavior this is based on the idea that removing the stimulus will extinguish the behavior that was earlier reinforced by it uh, another method that we can use involves use of stimuli which have a negative impact in the form of punishment or voluntary maladaptive behavior operant conditioning can also be used to increase desirable behaviors by giving positive reinforcement when the desirable behavior is carried out for example if we want a child to study every day every day we could reinforce study by allowing to watch a tv program of his choice every time he studies that is first the desirable behavior is coming then the demand is fulfilled the desirable behavior is to study every day then if the child studies every day then the reward which he gets is the tv program of his choice he is allowed to watch the tv program of his choice but if he studies only then he will be allowed to 
watch the TV program. In recent years, other than uh, these uh, reinforcement uh, therapies, a social learning approach to psychotherapy has emerged. Uh, this social uh, learning approach is uh, a model which is actually a link between the behavior and cognitive model of personality. As we have been always discussing that cognitive approaches are viewing on the thought process of the individual. So, uh, cognitive uh, approaches view mental disorders as caused by the irrational beliefs or the faulty thinking of the individual. Uh, the therapy that is involved in cognitive restructuring or changes uh, one's way of thinking is used here. Uh, for example, if a person uh, has a superstition that if a black uh, cat crosses in front of them, then it will cause problems. Then the person may be asked to experience it as many times as he or she can until the time the person realizes that there is no such link between the cat and the negative e events and thus it changes their thinking. That is basically this approach is uh, hitting the or I would say that it is trying to modify the thought process of the individual. The maladaptive thought processes are uh, restructured to the adaptive ones. The last uh, in this comes the humanistic psychotherapy. Uh, in the humanistic uh, perspective, uh, they believe that people are fundamentally good and seek growth and words towards uh, a better way of living. That is, they have the inner potential to grow in their lives. Everyone has that uh, need for self-respect and to shape their life according to the free choice or free will. Whatever they want, they can do. They have that inner potential. The individuals in themselves have that inner potential to, uh, you know, go or attain their goals. In the humanistic view, whatever the psychological disorders that are there in the individual, they are seen as occurring because the external environment in the individual is blocking them from moving in the direction of personal growth. So, in humanistic uh, therapy, the goal is that the therapist has to create an environment of unconditioning positive regard that allows to the client to get in touch with uh, their own true feelings and inner self. And once that environment is created by the therapist, the client is then asked to take responsibility and live more in accordance with striving of their inner self. And this will eventually lead to growth and greater life satisfaction. In the humanistic therapy, uh, the client tries to find out the solution to his or her problems on his or her own only. The therapist only tries to create such an environment where the uh, client is uh, helped to focus on the uh, you know cause of the problem and then to realize that how he on his own can solve his problem. This was all about today's program. But before we end up, I would just like to conclude what we did. We actually discussed that what is psychotherapy and we discussed different models in it. First of all, we discussed about the medical model where uh, we could get to know that medical model actually uh, says that whatever disorder a person has are actually related to a kind of uh, uh, illness and they can be treated with the help of medicines. Then we talked about the psychodynamic view, uh, which is uh, Sigmund Freud's uh, psychoanalysis and uh, which is related to the unconscious uh, conflicts that are responsible for the individual's problems. And in uh, psychoanalysis, uh, through free association, the individual is asked to get to know that what are the unconscious uh, uh, conflicts that are creating a problem to the individual and how those conflicts can be uh, bring uh, brought back to the conscious mind in order to deal with them more effectively. Then we discussed about the behavioral models in which we talked about uh, the classical conditioning procedures, the operant conditioning procedures and we also talked about the uh, cognitive approaches to deal with the anxiety provo provoking situations. Lastly, we discussed about the humanistic model where we could understand that humanistic uh, view individual as uh, uh, as having enough potential to deal with their problems, the therapist's job is just to create an environment where 
the individual can focus on uh, the the problems that they have identify that what is the causes of the problem and how they on their own can uh, you know deal with their problems with this i end up for today's program i hope you have understood this topic well thank you